<laughs> Hello, TheaterWorks friends. It's our joy to talk today with the acclaimed concert pianist, actor, playwright, and composer, Hershey Felder, one of the TheaterWorks' most unforgettable artists. Uh, it's great to talk to you again, Hershey. Uh, hello. Hi, nice to see you. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, as we've all been isolated these past two years, uh, I've been enjoying the wonderful video presentations that uh, you've been doing online, highlighted by your brilliant piano work and acting. Uh, many have featured exceptional singers and spectacular views of Florence, where you've uh, made your home since the COVID pandemic began. But, but now, after all this time, you're about to return to live performances with your extraordinary production of Monsieur, Monsieur Chopin and uh, right here at TheaterWorks. I can't wait to see you again and to see you on stage again, uh, thrilling our audiences. You've done Chopin, uh, the Chopin show in the Bay Area before, uh, most recently at Berkeley Rep in 2014. And uh, uh, how has it changed? Is it gonna be any different here at TheaterWorks? It's quite a bit different. Um, since 2014, it's actually became um, completely uh, re redone. I opened the new version of it. Uh, let me see. I think it was 2000, September of 2019. So it's quite a different show than it was originally. You know, all these things, especially these characters that I've come to know so well throughout my career, um, they, the more time goes on, the more you, you feel you have different things to say. And one of the great opportunities about being a soloist is that I can actually make the choice to say something different and get it done, which is a lot more difficult if you have a whole cast and, and a system and a design. And th that poses much more, um, many more challenges, not that it's undoable, but uh, it just poses more challenges. This, uh, although challenging in its artistic concept is not as challenging challenging technically. So I can actually do different things and attempt different um, aspects and attitudes and designs. It's completely new design than I had that was seen at Berkeley, completely new. Because um, that design was already 12 or 15 years old or something. So I wanted to see this re rejuvenated and I was able to do some interesting character. Things are quite a bit different than what they were in the Berkeley staging. In fact, vastly different. Wow. Well, you, uh, I think the show is now set in uh, Chopin's studio, I, I believe. And of course- Salon, yes, in Paris. Salon. In, 18, in 1848, yeah. Your brilliant design work again uh, being featured. Um, it's a it's one show that seems to really capitalize on your interaction with the audience and uh, with uh, the kind of uh, intimate uh, sense of sharing that you bring to many of your shows. But this one seems more even more so than most. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, originally um, it was less so. And one of the things that I realized was that audiences want to engage with this character in a conversation, um, not just a one-sided telling them a story, but actually in the conversation whereby audiences are engaged, especially because the audience is cast as characters. They are students to Chopin's uh, teaching. Um, and of course, they're not required to say anything or do anything, but sometimes people want to, and that makes it part of the fun. It makes it very alive and very present. And that was not present in the Berkeley staging. That was a new thing that I came up with as time went on. And so I'm looking forward to engaging with people. That's always fun. The engaging with people is always fun. And I'm sure after these couple of years, they'll have a whole lot to say. <laughs> What uh, what uh, draws you to Chopin as an artist and uh, as a person? Well, the music. I mean, it's always the music. As a per, you know, as a character, he's something to play because he's a very soft, angelic character, and he um, suffers uh, from from uh, what we would say today is is bipolar disorder, which is uh, responsible for a lot of the fluctuations in his music, but it's how he handles that and how he handles it in the context of a, uh, of a relationship. Um, in those days, it was called melancholia, and it was something that was, of course, not diagnosed, except for identifying that it was something. 
Um, and, uh, you know, having to deal with this and to tell this story on the stage is, it's quite moving. And I find it, um, his music so ethereal and so natural under, under my hand for me, that it, it just allows for the kind of colors out of a piano that, that not any other composer really allows for, you know, he's, he's a 20th century or 21st century composer wandering in the 19th century. And it's just it's it's mystical his work so there is the excitement of just the music in and of itself also a huge challenge to play it well so you can't ever there's there's no coasting there's i mean as as long as you've known me i'm not from the coasters <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I i give my all all the time but here there's really no coasting you got to be on the ball every split second that you're doing something and and um and i usually am but here it's it's just heightened for a very strange reason um so chopin is particularly difficult to play and uh i i know how much uh, energy and effort and practice goes into every single performance um is he one of the most difficult uh, composers that you've uh, uh, tried to create well you know i always say that anything done well is difficult nothing is is ever you know nothing is ever easy per se some things require a little less stamina um, uh, you know, depending on the character, or what happens is on the stage, uh, and your stamina grows and you learn places that you can work, you learn stamina management, I think is important, but in terms of, in terms of difficult, everything is difficult. I mean, impossible, no, but it all requires a huge amount of work and a huge amount of commitment. And as you all know, nothing, nothing done well ever just sort of comes easy kind of thing. You know, it's a lifetime of work, so. I know that Chopin was uh, referred to as the poet of the piano. Mm -hmm. and, uh, do you know how that came about or, you know, what the source of that uh, uh, sort of credit it came was, from? It was, in, it was in his day. Um, he was referred to, you know, he was uh, um, referred to in two ways. One is a sort of a salon pianist who wasn't taken as seriously as a big virtuoso, but by those in the know, they took him very seriously as being the greatest pianist alive. Um, it depends what one looks for from the piano. If one looks for crash, bang, boom, you know, your pianist was Liszt. But if you were looking for nuance and delicacy and elegance, it was Chopin, and he was considered the exponent of that kind of quality playing. And that is hard to do. And it's hard to do honestly, you know, to make sure you never get in your own way while you're doing it. So in his day, he was already called the poet of the piano for this very reason. Yeah, I cannot wait to see the Chopin show at Theater Works. Uh, I know it's going to be uh, brilliant, beautiful, deeply moving. And uh, what I especially like about it is that it's going to be uh, so intimate and uh, personal. Yeah, which I think very engaging. Yeah, it's an, in fun to engage with the audience. It is nice. Well, we'll see you in a, a, just a few weeks uh, or days, depending on uh, how this uh, interview is done. But uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, sure. Thank you, Hershey, so much for this wonderful time we've spent together from uh, Palo Alto and Mountain View all the way to Florence, Italy, and. Uh, uh, we can't say enough about uh, your work and uh, how much we appreciate you. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>